<clears throat> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this special event in honor of Professor Gidon Dagan's 90th birthday, hosted by the Israeli Academy of Sciences and Humanities. My name is Avinoam Obinovich. I'm a faculty member at Tel Aviv University, uh, the same department as Gidon's. And I'll be moderating this ceremony uh, this afternoon. We have uh, many guests here from abroad, so we're going to have the ceremony in English, obviously. Um, and to open this event, I have the honor to invite Professor David Harel, President of the Israeli Academy of Sciences and Humanities. Good afternoon, everyone. Professor Tzvi bin Avraham and Dr. Avinoam Rabinovich, my dear, dear friend, the Bar Mitzvah boy, Professor Gidon Dagan and his family, members of the steering committee, dear lecturers from Israel, and especially those who came from abroad, members of the academy, and all the participants, both here in the auditorium, as well as those watching us online. Uh, it is really a great privilege to speak in honor of Professor Gidon Dagan, one of the most distinguished scientists in hydrology worldwide, whose pioneering contributions have been vital to the study of the most important resource in our lives, water. The British poet W.H. Oden wrote, thousands have lived without love, not one without water. But water consists merely of three simple atoms. To a layperson, it is truly extraordinary that the trivial bonding of two hydrogen atoms with one oxygen atom is the most fundamental basis for all life on Earth. The vibrant essence of water not only accompanies us in our physical existence, but is also reflected within our cultural life. In chapter 20 of the Book of Numbers, it says, and Moshe lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice, and water came out abundantly. This is perhaps the first description of an aquifer and of the life-giving power of water, as the Israelites could not have survived in the desert otherwise. Without water, of course, there is no life. Paradoxically, however, although the earth is saturated with water, Water is a resource that is in constant shortage, since most of the water on Earth is unfit for human use in its natural form. In practice, only a small percentage of the Earth's water is fresh and fit for drinking, and even that is in constant danger of contamination. Gidon Dagan's trailblazing scientific work on groundwater hydrology has contributed vastly to improving water resources around the world. Through his unique models, he has developed and created an important basis for predicting water processes that occur in the upper ground layer and in aquifers for more efficient utilization of groundwater, making it possible to predict the change in water quality due to pollution or salting processes. Your discoveries, dear Gidon, are used routinely by numerous scientists and technical experts who help deliver fresh water to thirsty populations, notably in countries that suffer from a constant shortage of drinking water due often to climate change and global warming. The need to create innovative solutions in light of these changes is constantly becoming more and more crucial and additional alternatives and solutions must be examined. Recognizing the vital nature of this necessity, the Israel Academy of Sciences and Humanities has recently published a special report assessing the situation of marine science in Israel. Our recommendations to the government, and I should add that recommendations to the government are one of the main roles by law of the academy. Uh, uh, recommendations include not only issues related to the great resources found in the sea and the desalination of seawater, at present the main source of drinking water for the population of Israel, but also matters of energy, food, medicine, and engineering technologies. And this is just a drop in the ocean, if I may use such a phrase, 
in the current context. Really great is the importance of advancing these issues, a process that will be forever in debt to Gidon Dagan's game-changing research. I must add that Gidon does not only work on water, he spends a last, large part of his time literally immersed in water. He swims, as I understand it, 40 pool lengths three to four times a week, thus putting virtually all of us to shame. <laughs> Did I get the numbers right, Gideon? Yes. The way you look, I think you are not ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked if I got the numbers right. Uh, Gideon's, I wasn't fishing for compliments. <laughs> Gideon's achievements have received impressive recognition, as we all know, on numerous prestigious awards. Among these, obviously, uh, maybe the pinnacle of them, is the Stockholm Water Prize in 1998, often referred to as the Nobel Prize for Water, for his contribution to the preservation and protection of the world's water sources and the improvement of water supply conditions. And of course, in our neck of the woods, the Israel Prize in 2013. It is also important to praise Gidon's efforts to expose the younger generation to the importance of water research. He imported to Israel the International Stockholm Water Prize Competition for Youth, where teenagers compete to, to develop solutions for better utilization of water resources. Over the years, this international competition has challenged and enriched hundreds of students all over Israel. And by the way, I haven't written this down, but I remember, I don't know how many of you are familiar with a journal called the Journal of Irreproducible Research, uh, which has papers that look very serious scientific, but they're always uh, humorous. And I remember many, many years ago, Lee Siegel, who was the dean of our faculty at Weizmann, I think he was the editor-in-chief, and he showed me uh, a paper that uh, some people had written about the water problem in Israel, which was full of graphs and, and formulas. And in it, what they said, the main claim was, if you take all the articles, research articles that were ever written about the water problem in Israel, and you connect all the pages, you can cover the Sea of Galilee, the Kinneret, <laughs> and prevent evaporation of water and make a lot more water than you could make by all the techniques in all of those papers. <laughs> the talks we'll be hearing today will help us understand Gidon's scientific work and contemplating the invisible journey of water flowing underground should I intensify our fascination with this crucial element of our daily lives. The American, the American anthropologist, Lauren Aisley, in his book, The Immense Journey, put it this way. If there is magic on this planet, it is contained in water. So thank you, dear Gideon, for bringing that magic to the lives of us all. On behalf of the entire academy, I wish you many more years of scientific productivity and excitement joy with your family and friends, and all in good health. I'd like to thank the Academy staff for making this event happen, the one and only Dr. Yael Ben Chaim. Uh, I don't have to point her out, you all know her. Yes. Naama Shiloni, Kochi Maimran, Michael Zaguri, Yaakov Rotman, and our fabulous CEO, Galia Finzi. Wish us all a very inspiring afternoon slash evening. Thank you.